Burp Suite isn't just for capturing requests. It's a hacker's army knife for encoding, decoding and manipulating data to uncover vulnerabilities. So in this video, I will show you exactly how to use this tool like a pro. So, are you ready to level up? Let's get to it. To demonstrate how to use Decoder, we will use this lab from Port Swiggers Academy. Ok guys, so as you can see in this description below, this lab has a SQL injection vulnerability in the stock check feature. And we can use a union attack to retrieve data from the user's table. So let's access the lab. And since the SQL injection vulnerability is in the stock check feature, our first step is to click on one of these products to check the product's availability, ok? So we click on one. And as you can see here below, we have a button that says check stock. Now, before we click on it, we will enable Burp Suite on our Foxy proxy. So we click here and we en enable Burp Suite. Now, I will move this window to the left side. And here on Burp Suite, we will turn on our intercept. Ok, now we can click on the button that says check stock. And as you can see, our request was captured by our Burp Suite. We right click on it and we will send this to repeater so we can work with it further, ok? Now, as you can see, we have here our request on repeater. Now we can turn off our intercept and disable our Burp Suite on our Foxy proxy. So now we go back to repeater. And as you can see here below the body of our request, we have two parameters, the product ID, and this checks the product ID, and we have the store ID that will check the store's ID. Currently, the request is checking how much stock of a product with an ID of 1 exists in a store with an ID of 1. If we send this request, so let's send it, you will see that we have 511 units of this product in the store. Let's test for SQL injection in the store ID parameter using a simple payload like this one that I will show you. Like this one here. Now, we test only one parameter at a time and this is because injecting the same payload into both product ID and store ID can create conflicts in the query, like causing it to fail. Now let's send our payload and see what's the output. So, send. Ok, so as you can see, our attack is detected by the WAF. And WAF means Web Application Firewall. So, we need to obfuscate the payload to bypass the WAF. And for this, we can encode this payload on decoder. Now, before we proceed, you should know about Decoder's features. So let's see. So let's go to Decoder. And here on Decoder, you can Encode, Decode and Smart Decode. Now, if you click on this drop-down menu where it says Decode as, you will see various types of decoding options. And these options work the same for encoding. So if, if you click on Encode as, you will see that you have the same options. Now let me break them down for you. With URL, HTML, Hexadecimal, ASCII and Octal, you can encode payloads to bypass swaps or input validation. So imagine that you want to inject a payload into a URL, then you use Encode as URL. Imagine that you want to do the same but in the HTML part of your request. Then you can use the encode as HTML and so on. With Base64, Binary and ASCII and Hexadecimal once again, you can decode for example tokens, cookies and API keys. So Base64 for session tokens or API responses, Hexadecimal and Binary for analysis of network packets, cookies or obfuscate data. Finally, the gzip is used for efficiency because many HTTP responses like HTML, JavaScript are gzip compressed to save bandwidth. So for example, if you are testing how the server handles compressed payloads, 
you can send a malicious payload inside of a compressed request. Or when you intercept HTTP traffic and need to analyze the raw response content, you can decode it as gzip and so on. Now that we understand our encoding options, let's proceed with our attack. So we go back to our repeater to copy our payload. We go to decoder, we paste our payload here and we encode as HTML. We encode as HTML because the body of our request is in XML and HTML encoding is the best option to safely inject special characters into the XML while bypassing the WAF. Now we copy our encoded payload, we go back to repeater and we paste it here like so and we send our request with our payload let's see okay as you can see this time the payload bypassed the WAF however we couldn't extract any sensitive data and this might be because the database expects a specific query structure like this one here on this terminal the product ID equals to one store ID equals to one of course that you could have equals to 2 and here as well equals to 2. It doesn't matter, but this is expected by our database. When we inject 1 or 1 equals to 1, the payload that I injected before, the query becomes like this one. The product ID is equals to 1, but the store ID is equals to the payload that we inserted. The 1 equals to 1 condition always evaluates to true. It could give us more data. However, the application seems to be programmed to only show results when the values of the product ID and the store ID match. If the product ID is 1 and the store ID is 1 as well, the application looks for this combination in the database, finds a match and shows the stock for the product in that store. However, if the product ID is 1 but the store ID is like this here on our terminal, the application can't find a match to this because the payload gives more data than the expected and because of this the application defaults to 0 units as a safe fallback. This shows us two things. First we need to encode our payload to bypass the WAF and second our database doesn't uh, respond well to queries that don't match. Instead of manipulating the query, we can combine the query that will give us a match and we can use for that a one, for instance, with another query. And for that, we will use the union that will combine the first query with the second query that can retrieve sensitive data like usernames and passwords. We can use this payload here. And, as I told you before, we will use the union to combine the first query, that is this one, that will match with this, and we will combine this first query with this second query here. And if this works, we will be able to retrieve usernames and passwords from users. Ok guys? So, we will use this payload here. I will copy. We go back to Burp Suite. And we go to decoder, we clean this and we paste our payload here. Now, let me just tell you that the tilde, so this one here in the middle, will separate usernames from the passwords. This is just to facilitate us to know where the username ends and the password begins. We copy our encoded payload, we go to repeater. We take our previous payload out and we paste our new payload, just like this. We send and we pray, if you want, of course. <laughs> and let's see, and here we have it, guys. So we have the administrator, we have Carlos, winner, and of course, we will try to log in with the credentials of the most powerful user in this list. And that's administrator we copy the username we go we go to my account we paste the username here and we copy the password and we paste it here 
now let's see and we are in guys we are administrator we didn't decode anything but it works the same way so i encourage you to practice your encoding and decoding skills with port trigger for instance or boxes from hack the box you choose what you like better of course and don't forget to tell me how is it going for you because i would love to hear what you have to say and this is it guys we have seen how to identify vulnerabilities how to bypass swaths and how to use burp suites decoder to craft payloads and extract sensitive data if you found this video helpful don't forget to drop a like subscribe and leave a comment with what you want to learn next also, if you want to keep the momentum going and learn about how to make fuzzing and brute force attacks with Intruder on Burp Suite, then check out this video here. See you next time, stay curious, stay safe and stay ethical. Bye bye!